So, um, I mean, t t just uh, what was the process like? Um, you know, I don't know if it's all if it's all related. It just kind of seemed like last time I maybe talked to you, you know, Coach Jans was kind of in the mix at some other places. I don't know. You, were you looking to get back on the sidelines regardless of what happened with him and your spot here? Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, Coach Jans really helped me out tremendously by giving me the opportunity to, A, get into college, and then, B, be able to coach my son. I mean, at my alma mater, I mean, that's, you know, that's something I'll, I'll never forget, and I'll be forever indebted to him for that and that experience. And it was fantastic. You know, I hadn't had any college experience, and, you know, I learned a ton, got to coach Tennessee. But, yeah, as he was graduating, I knew that uh, – um, my time at New Mexico State was done, and um, it, you know, it was totally mutual and cordial, and yeah, uh, you know, completely professional. But yeah, I think we both realized, you know, hey, this has run its course in the right way, and I knew I was going to go back to uh, to you know try and do a get a head job or get back in the NBA or go overseas. Okay, um, how hard was it for you just as a as a coach? I mean, I, I know that you were probably involved in, in stuff, but like you couldn't be as hands-on as maybe you wanted to be, right? I mean, was that your role here kind of? Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, technically it was a non-coaching role. Um, certainly was able to do um, a lot behind the scenes with Coach Jans. He was really good about bringing me in and, and you know, talking basketball. So that was good. I didn't feel like I was just completely out of my element, but um yeah, it was something that I'm, I'm extremely pleased I did. The experience that I gained has uh, been invaluable. Um, it's certainly applying here. A lot of the college um, okay. philosophies and practice techniques are being applied here uh, just because, you know, it's not the, you know, it's not the highest level. It's not NBA. So you're coaching here. You're coaching every single day. You're coaching every minute of practice. You're trying to improve these guys. So <clears throat> coming from a teaching atmosphere, uh, like Coach Jans has, uh, was really good for me in that respect. So it's kind of like, you know, I've hit the ground running here, got a lot of stuff from my pro background and a lot of, you know, a lot of Jans tricks in my back pocket too. Okay. Um, when you were looking for a spot, was this, is there a connection here with the Kuwaiti League or did that, is that something that you're like, I don't know, how how did you come about to end up out there? Yeah, completely random. Um, uh, I was looking at, China, of course, looking back, going back to the NBA. Um, but when this when this job came about, they hadn't even had import players here in seven years. Okay. So um, this is new for them again. And then when I kind of got wind of the money they were going to spend, I said, wait a minute now. This reminds me of when I first went to China when the money was getting really good. Um, and it, it caught my attention. I said, for that kind of money, you can get legit players. Like, for example, there's another guy that Coach Jans coached at Wichita State. His name is Tere Murray. He okay. plays in this league. He played, in the, yeah, he played in the NBA for the Knicks, for the Wizards, for the Jazz. I actually coached against him in the G League Championship in 2016. He played for Jans at Wichita State. Really established, high-level pro. He's in this league. Uh, Sal Ray Mejri. Um, who played for the Mavericks for years and years. I also coached against him in the G League. He's he's in this league. He's Tunisian. Just had a great uh, great run with the Tunisian national team. They won the Afro Basket a couple three weeks ago. Um, another player named James Feldin, who's played high level Euro League. Uh, who played who's a Dominican place for the Dominican national team. The level of pro is is really high here. Um, yeah. And so they're able to attract good talent. And with that, you know, that was intriguing to me, kind of get, get in on this league at the, uh, at the ground floor as they're, as they're bringing these imports back. And then, you know, I've been pleasantly surprised with the talent level of the, of the local players. Um, they know how to play. Uh, I think Zach mentioned that they hadn't been coached much before. I mean, they've had pro professional coaches and, you know, even, you know, Serbians and Tunisians and Turkish and Egyptians. But I, I think this level of coaching, this, having to pay, you know, closer attention to detail, they've really eaten it up. And I've seen insane improvement over the past eight weeks. So that's that's been really uh, enjoyable from a coaching standpoint. So what, like, uh, I mean, I'm not familiar, like, is what city are you, what is the name of your team, your city? And, you know, like, how big of a city is that compared to the rest of the country? Like, well, we're in Kuwait City. Kuwait City, okay. Yep. 
and basically almost the entire country lives here you know what i mean there's 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 four million people in this city about one and a half million of them are kuwaitis the rest are four nationals who uh, i mean uh our expats who come and do, you know, they work all the other jobs. They work the restaurants, the hotels, their nannies, their English teachers, school teachers, coaches, what have you. So um, uh, expats outnumber the Kuwaitis like three to one. Uh, but primarily, you know, it, it's it's right on the Persian Gulf. Um, you know, it's extremely safe. Obviously, the, uh, um, the, the partnership and relationship with the United States is very, very good. It's extremely safe here. Um, you know, it, it's been really surprisingly an easy adjustment, way easier than any place else I've been overseas. It's just kind of like, you know, the culture's different, of course. The weather is even hotter than Las Cruces, hotter than Las Vegas, but it's on this beautiful, I mean, the coast is absolutely beautiful. Um, and the Kuwaiti people are extremely friendly, very welcoming. And, uh, it's, it's been a blast so far. Um, how, when you said you've been out there for eight weeks, like, I mean, was there a, is there a training camp or when does your season start? Can you talk about just the process since you've been out there? Yeah. Yeah. So we started at the beginning of August with kind of typical, you know, two a day practices, which you do a lot overseas, you know, basically all in Europe, every, every place I've ever coached outside the United States practices twice a day. Um, you know, different stuff. You mix it up. You got pool workouts, beach workouts, stretching lift you're not going full five six hours hardcore every day but yeah you're practicing a lot uh, we actually just finished a little training camp of even more intense two days last week and then uh, we've got these next two weeks or so to build up uh, and get everything right before the season opener and our season opener is actually October 20th the league opens on the 17th but we don't play that first round so we'll play uh, we'll play 10 games in the first round, then the league has to, this is due to COVID, the league has to take a break because the um, eight, uh, the, the uh, Gulf Cup games, the national team will play in the, uh, in, the, in the Gulf games and they'll take two players from like each team. And that's usually played in the summer, but due to COVID, they're going to play it, you know, right in the middle of the season. So mm -hmm. we'll take a break. We'll go travel over the, around the Middle East, Dubai, Qatar, Bahrain, all those teams who also had national team players taken from their teams and we'll play like kind of almost like a mid-season friendly tournament. Sure. Um, then we'll pick back up in January and then there's two more rounds. There's a super cup involved and then the playoffs come. So all, all, all uh, said and told, we'll, uh, we'll probably be around 50 games, I would say. From now through? End of April. Okay. Possibly a little later. Uh, I didn't even think about that, but obviously COVID, I mean, what's the atmosphere like out there? Is there fans or is it like, what's it like out there as far as sports and, and Kuwait? It was very difficult to get in the country. Usually as a U.S. citizen, you can just fly straight to Kuwait. They give you a visa upon arrival. You pay, you know, two bucks and you're good, you know, because of the relationship between the two countries. You get, you know, a civil ID card as an American, which gives you many, many rights as a Kuwaiti citizen. You can open a bank account, you can drive a car, you can do all that stuff. Right now though, the visas are extremely limited. So it took six weeks to get my visa, six weeks to get Zach's, six weeks to get my Serbian. They're just not letting people in the country and they're 85% vaccinated. I think they only had 38 cases in the country yesterday. So they've done an outstanding job as far as staying on COVID. And that's that's in the entire region, from what I'm understanding, in the whole Gulf region, they've really done a good job. So, um, you know, their Delta variant hit, you know, way earlier than ours did. It hit like in February. So they've already clamped that down. Um, and, you know, now I'm just, I mean, I'm, I'm ready. I'm probably getting close to getting my booster shot. So I'm excited about that. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's tighter restrictions. You know, you got to show a vaccine certificate to go in the malls, um, uh, a vaccine passport. We just have our little um, kind of handwritten cards that, you know, are, these people can't believe that's what we have. I mean, they have a whole app with their ID, their, you know, social security number, the equivalent civil ID number. And it is, you know, it is hardcore and, and they won't let you in without it. You can't do anything without it here, which is you know, they're able to do, obviously it's a much smaller population to kind of uh, govern, but um, they've done an outstanding job with their vaccination uh, uh, process. Um, 
you mentioned Zach. Zach said I think he got out there about three weeks ago. Um, I guess I didn't I didn't realize that he, he was there before you. Uh, you know, maybe a little bit before you. But he he was in New Mexico State before you. Um, I mean, it's good to probably have an NMSU guy out there though, and to have that kind of fall in your lap. Well, you know, I always try to bring an Aggie from Billy Keys to Justin Hawkins. Yeah, you know, I helped I helped Trev Queen get in with. Yeah. Uh, with um, the Lakers, I got Jamario drafted with South Bay, and then I'm taking Zach here with me now. I always got to have an Aggie, and, and we're fortunate that we've got good guys that are real pros. So For sure. you know, it's not like you know, you know, I'm not, I'm not signing, you know, some some joker. I mean, this Zach's 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 the real deal, and yeah. you know, I think I, I I got a little lucky because he sat out with COVID and other issues last year, which a lot of players did. But, you know, it, it gave me an opportunity to get him where I don't know if I would have been able to get him if he'd gone and had like a big time year in Europe or something like that. that. That may not have happened, but the timing worked out great. I certainly was familiar with him being an Aggie fan, you know, watching him before I even took the job. I knew exactly who all those guys were. And then I met Zach a couple of times uh, when he'd come and visit. And, you know, after studying tape on him, doing research on him with Coach Jans, and Coach Anwar, you know, is like, this is my guy. Um, and he's, you know, I expect big things from him. He's going to be able, he's going to score a lot of points in this league. There's no question about that. I think the fans are going to love him. Um, and we're just excited to get it going. You know, I, I'm, I'm chomping at the bit. You mentioned, uh, I think you said a Serbian player. So is it all locals and then two, two internationals? Is that what you get on your roster or? Yep, right now that is correct. And the Serbian was uh, a junior teammates all the way up through their early pro years with Jokic. Okay. They, play, they played on the same youth club. You know, um, this guy could easily be in the NBA, 6'10", stretch four, great body, athletic. But, you know, it's, you know, it's winning the lottery to get in the NBA. But there's, you know, the, the, you know the kid Maxi Kleber that plays for Dallas? Yep. Yep. Yep, they were they grew up together as well. Um, I think they were on opposite clubs, but they're they're all friends. But he's he's every bit as good as as Max Kleber. Every bit as good. And yeah. you know, hopefully this propels him in, into a, a bigger stage and Zach as well. You know, if the money keeps getting better here and the talent keeps going up, you know, maybe they can stay and you know get up to crazy China money, like a million a year. But you know, it's kind of in that in that first step. But uh, I've been impressed so far with the players, the level players that the league has signed, and the top four or five teams in Kuwait um, can compete in a lot of European leagues. I was not expecting that. I, I thought it'd be much lower level. I've been pleased with their understanding and level play. And like I said before, their willingness to be coached. They improve rapidly. They retain information. They're able to transfer it uh, into practice and then, you know, into the preseason games we've had. So, um, so far, so good. You know, we've, we've got, in my opinion, um, the second best team in the league. There's a team ahead of us that wins the league basically every year. So that's who we're chasing. Um, and they've got a big target on their back and we're, we're all in on them, you know, and, and uh, that, that's our big focus. They're a, they're a big time club. You know, they're, they're playing and they're playing some exhibition games in Serbia right now. They've got a lot of money. Um, and uh, you know, it's, it's definitely a goal of ours to knock them off. So I, I've spoken over the years. I've spoken with some guys like uh, Hawkins. Um, you know, like players like they go to the G League and and try to make the dream there. And it seems like at some point they want like Jonathan Gibson, another guy. You know, they they go over and find a league to try to make a living. Is that is that where Zach's at right now, or is he still? Can you still you know is he still young enough to where he can maybe come back over here or something like that? Like. He's 27, and the I think a few years ago he would have been a prime candidate, you know, kind of when Justin was and when Gibson, you know, came back from China. There's no question that Zach has the talent to play in the NBA. There's, you know, he, he's so much more mature and so much, much more skilled than a lot of these young guys, but the league is so young now. Yeah. You know, there's not even any, any of the, you know, the, every year out of the G League, there used to be 70, 80, 100 call-ups. Now it's all two-way players. Yeah. You know, exhibit 10 players and they're really young and it's the focus is way more about development than finding like a veteran that can help you win. Yeah. So, you know, even from when I coached in 15, 16, I had a lot of veterans and that's why we made it to the finals that year. I had guys 27, 28, Hawk was 30, you know, that, 
and we rolled through those kids. But right now, the emphasis in the G League is uh, is is really you know player development. And these are young kids that haven't even been coached. Some of them don't go to college, you know, with the, when they go to that G League ignite or or they go one and done, but they're not really coached because you know they're 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 there just to try to get wins and put points on the board. So. The league is really young. The NBA is really young right now, so a lot more focus on on player development. So guys like Zach, you know, I think his focus needs to be, you know, how can I? You know, I've given my whole life to this game, and I think it's also time for me to get something out of it too. And you know, right. he's got a young family, like he mentioned. And hey, nothing's promised when you're a pro athlete. You know, your body, your body is your money maker. And sometimes guys play till they're forty. Some guys. Play till they're 26, 31, you know, you never know. So I think you got to get every penny you can out of this game. So we talked about the player standpoint. What about a co- like, I mean, I don't know if you signed a contract uh, for a certain for X number of years or something like that, but like, is it the same for coaches or did, are you there for a couple of years at least? Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, I've got a two year deal uh, with some good options in it. Um, you know, I wanted that security, uh, you know, I think a one-year deal, you just, you're a lame duck coach from the second you get there. And I've certainly had success overseas, but I've also been in those situations where on a one-year deal, you know, things, you know, don't go exactly the way you want them to. And 10 games in, they'll just, you know, they'll fire your ass. Okay. You know, it's easier to replace the coach than the players. You know, they're paying the players, you know, $50,000 a month. They're paying the coach, you know, far less than that. And it's like, okay, we need a coaching change. But I think I've got good security here. The GM I have a great relationship with. Before I took it, you know, we we tried to share and create a long term vision, and I think we've done that. Uh, you know, right now I'm 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 in a really good spot because I'm undefeated. Yeah. You know, so um, I'm I'm uh, I'm I'm really popular right now. You know, if if we if we drop a couple games, you know, I could be making a a, a whole different phone call to you. But uh, yeah, overseas is tough. Every game is the Super Bowl. It's not like the NBA where, oh, okay. you know, hey, it was Tuesday. Yeah, you know, it's like, hey, it's a Tuesday night in, in Cleveland. Let's okay. get through it, put on a show and get on the plane and go to Chicago. I mean, this is – each game is big. Each game is passionate, you know, very heated. Um, so I, I miss that about overseas. That's, that's what it is everywhere I've been overseas. The games are really, really important. So you love that as a coach, the chance to compete for something meaningful – um, the players certainly need no motivation to get up for these games. You're not like pulling teeth to get them to play hard. So the intensity level is much higher overseas than it is in the NBA.